With your new camera flying through the air, it's a good time to ask yourself, why did I buy this camera? Was it one person or a few people on the internet that encouraged you that this camera was a good idea? That this camera was near perfect for street photography? Then, a few weeks later, they suggested an entirely different camera for similar reasons. Relying entirely on camera videos on YouTube for reviews and recommendations can have its downsides. If you look to people like me or any of these people you see in your search results, you're relying on quite unpredictable people. And while you can kind of learn everyone's personal tastes and then how that relates to your own personal taste based on their recommendations, it can be quite hard to measure whether someone else's recommendation is good for you or for someone else. The great part of this is that every camera you see is a great camera to buy, but the downside of this is how do you decide which of these cameras is the right one for you? How do we find the perfect camera without going through this long-winded process? Oh, there you are, potato. Meet Goldilocks. She has a habit of trespassing and taking what isn't hers, but she can teach us a thing or two about buying cameras. When Goldilocks tries out a new chair or a new bed, she does not check the label. She does not go on YouTube to look at reviews of chairs or look up unboxings of new beds and mattresses. No, she only tries to see what she likes. Likewise, when she tries porridge, she doesn't even grab a thermometer to measure temperature or check the ingredients on the box. She just tries everyone else's until she figures out which one is just right. Ignoring specs as Goldilocks does, I want to make something clear. If you've ever owned, driven, or even just sat in a car before, do you notice things such as the acceleration, say zero to 60, the torque, or the balance of a car? Probably not. If you're like me, these things just kind of happen in the background. You might instead be noticing things like how easy it is to connect your phone to the Bluetooth, or how comfortable the seats are, how you adjust the seats, or the frequency of the windscreen wipers and how difficult it is to get the perfect frequency. I say all this because the same is true here with cameras. The great photographers and true professionals rarely think about the number of autofocus points they have, or the precise dynamic range or resolution of their sensor, or, unlike me, the resolution of their EVF, which plagues my sleep at night. All they want is a reliable camera that takes photos as they want, when they want. Something that keeps their creative process as uncomplicated as possible. Almost as uncomplicated as getting lifetime access to every Lightroom preset, video LUT, and other creative assets that I make forever. That's right, for a one-time fee, you get lifetime access to monthly updates of Lightroom presets, video LUTs, and other creative assets. And if you don't like what you get, there is a 30-day money-back guarantee. You just ask, you'll get your money back. But I guarantee, once you get into the Megapix Skills lifetime access area, you'll never want to go back. Remember, presets look terrible on a projector. So go follow the link in the description and the pinned comment to check them out for yourself. The easiest way to find the right camera for you is by just getting hands-on experience with a whole variety of cameras. This does not have to mean paying hundreds of pounds just to get your hands on a camera. Instead, go into high street camera shops. Go in and just chat to the staff, have a go with different cameras. Often they will let you kind of point it around the shop. Some may even trust you to go out on the street and take a few photos with it. Another way is to rent through services like Fat Llama or directly from high street places. Alternatively, if you have some photography friends, you can just ask them, could I borrow your camera for a week or so, or even just a couple of days to give it a go. The important things you wanna pay attention to when you get some hands-on experience is the hands-on experience. How does the camera feel in your hand? Think about whether or not you like the button placement. Do you like the shutter button? Do you like the EVF and the resolution? Do you like the LCD screen? Do you like its brightness? Do you like the touch interface? There are so many different things you want to look out for with a camera that are not specs on paper. So often the specs on the paper become abstract numbers in the back of your mind compared to the things that actually you experience day to day when shooting with it. Each of these characteristics that I've mentioned might be something that are a make or break to you, but something I don't really mind, or vice versa. EVF resolution, for example, is really important to me, but for a lot of people, that does not bother them. Try several brands, body types, and sensor sizes till you get a good idea of what clicks for you and the way you like to shoot. Once we've found the brand and the camera that suit our style, we can start to consider the lenses we want to use on our chosen mount. 
You may not know, but there's a missing chapter in the Goldilocks fairy tale, and that is when she tried out an ultra wide lens, a medium lens, and a telephoto lens. And what did she discover? She discovered that 35mm was the best for her. That doesn't mean it's the best for you, but she loved it. Of course, I'm not Goldilocks. Or am I? So when I compare these different lenses, my preferences are going to be different to hers. For me, it might not be that one is too wide and the other too long. It could be that to me, both of them are too long and I prefer something wider, or vice versa, they could be both too wide and I prefer something longer. I often chat to photographers who have completely different preferences in terms of focal length, camera body, image editing style to me. So there is no right or wrong, one size fits all for every single photographer out there. If you are mainly looking for a digital camera, don't jump right at a prime lens straight away. Going for a zoom can also be massively helpful. Especially when starting out, this will help you get a better understanding of different focal lengths and how they impact your images and how they might create these sort of images that you like to take versus something on the other end of the spectrum. If you picked up an 85mm lens for your first lens and it turns out you're actually an ultra wide kind of person, that's a difficult thing to go back on. Whereas if you get a zoom, you can really test out the wide end of the spectrum and the long end of the spectrum to then decide which primes to invest in next. Alongside autofocus lenses, we also have a whole range of manual lenses to choose from, like vintage lenses, cinema lenses, and even these Nightwalker lenses that have been kindly set to me. Besides the cinema lenses that I'm filming this particular video with, thank you to Surai, Surui, Surui, Surai. Besides these lenses, the world of manual lenses is totally worth exploring, especially for photography. I'm someone who prefers shooting street photography with vintage manual lenses. So I recommend trying out vintage manual lenses for street photography, especially in the digital age where we used to focus by wire autofocus. Go back to something a bit simpler and more engaging. The more you learn about photography, the more you actually want to focus on the images you're taking rather than the camera that's in your hand. And for me, this has kind of meant removing more of these digital assist features to rely on something that Sometimes I shoot with this that doesn't have a battery, it doesn't have reliable metering, it just has a manual focus lens and a fixed ISO film inside. And somehow, counterintuitively, this helps me think about images better than when I would shoot with a digital camera. This isn't the case for everyone, but I highly recommend manual lenses becoming part of your kit. For a full video on how to use manual lenses with digital cameras for street photography, I've actually created two on this topic that go into a lot of detail. And don't worry, they won't set your Nikon on fire. May your potatoes rest in fries.